coming out of the Pac-12 and some special guests making their appearance in the stands. That's brother Russell Wilson. That's right, the NFL QB. He's here to cheer on his sister as Stanford seeking their 13th consecutive trip to the Sweet 16 as we take a look at the starting lineup for the Cardinal presented by Capital One. Williams 23 and white. She will be running the show. Anna Wilson though, dropping the bucket first. She knocks down the three looking at Oklahoma State. Who do they have on the floor? Well, just a nice mixture of Mack and Asbury. They did the heavy lifting in the first round, complimented by Taylor Collins, one of those freshmen coming in and making an impact for the Cowgirls and Jim Littell. This is a well-oiled machine offense in the Stanford Cardinal, one of the best teams at sharing the basketball. Over, average over 16 and a half assists per game. So they're going to move a lot without the ball. Lots, lots of cuts towards the rim and a good sign for Anna Wilson to knock down that three. They're just picking up right where they left off. 15 last game, one for one today. The Stanford Cardinal coming in at 26 and two on the season. Wrapped up the Pac-12 championship with the crowns, five to go on the shot clock. Lexi Hull puts it up and no good. Rebound by Lauren Fields. Fields, the sophomore out of Shawnee, Oklahoma. They are in search, the Cowgirls. Their first trip to the Sweet 16 since 2014. Anna Wilson hesitated, has an open look, and what's more? Uh-oh. Nothing but net. Wait a minute. Anna Wilson up in the game already. She had six points last game. She matches that total just in the first minute and some change. Her head coach, Tara Vanderveer, you may have heard of her. The winningest coach in all of Division I in women's basketball history, 15 game winning streak, an outstanding coach indeed in her 35th season with the program. That one stuffed right there. Cameron Brink, the true freshman. She said, want some, come get some. <laughs> Cameron Brink, a special freshman, six foot four, can play anywhere on the court. I feel like that's gonna be the future of this women's game is the bigger, the taller, but they have guard-like skills. Look at the ability off the dribble. Six foot four, effortless for the freshman. And welcoming the challenge of going up against the nation's leading shot blocker, Natasha Matt Cameron Brink, already looking fearless. Well, Cameron Brink leads the Pac-12 in block shots, so she's no slouch either. Look, she doesn't lead the nation <laughs> in block shots, but that's a fun matchup to watch for today. An eight nothing advantage early on for the number one overall seed Stanford Cardinal, but a big shot there as Lauren Fields gets the first three points of the game for the Cowgirls. Yeah, Tiffany, balance is really key for Oklahoma State. It can't be Natasha Mack and Jamie Asbury. There has to be a third or fourth contributor, contributor to keep up with all of the offense that's coming at you from the Stanford Cardinal. Their head coach, Jim Littell, the Big 12 Coach of the Year. What a great job that he's done. And he's seen his group really take it to another level. Obviously, he says it's also nice to rely on and know that you can have that security blanket of Natasha Mack standing there ready to swat shots Ooh. away. What a move by Anna Wilson. She said, I came to play. Wilson already with eight of Stanford's 10 points here tonight. Letting it fly, Nefertali Natoa, the Aussie off the mark. Turnover as the Cowgirls fall on it and possession arrow 
with Oklahoma State. But let's go back to Anna Wilson, who just says, I'm ready. Well, I like the fact that she's been aggressive, especially at the top of the key for Stanford. You can have a lot of success in that triangle offense that they run. And this is an added bonus for Stanford because she really doesn't score. I mean, she guards the, 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 her opponent's best player, and she'll limit them usually to below what they average. So the fact that she's already got eight points is a great sign if you're Tara Vanderveer. Wilson known to be a lockdown defender and just one of those players when you hear her story, you just absolutely fall in love with it, battle with injuries earlier in her career, but just made up her mind she was going to be invaluable to this team. Hung out with her brother, Russell, in San Diego and just came back in phenomenal shape and Tara Vanderveer had no choice but to insert her in the starting lineup. Left short, Mack on the rebound. Mack needs some touches. They've got to get her on the move. You can see Fran Belibi just kind of cheating in. Fields being guarded by Williams and a turnover there for the Cowgirls. The observations thus far, Steffi, of what Stanford is doing well on both ends of the floor will start here on offense. I, I think that they've been aggressive. They've been running through their sets and, and looking for the best shot. And so far, it's been Anna Wilson off the take here. Key Williams, good look for them, but just making Oklahoma State uncomfortable. But best way to do that is get out in transition, get some easy scores. Check out Cassidy DeLapp. The junior out of El Dorado Hills, California. Sprinting the floor, making it happen. Anna Wilson playing well, eight points. Big brother in the house. We'll talk their relationship when we come. You know, she's overcome a lot because when she talks about their relationship, you know, Russell built his career a lot about a lot off of people doubting him. And so when Anna Wilson was in high school. Everybody told her how great she was. She was a McDonald's All-American, but it wasn't until her senior year where she suffered a concussion that really took her out. And her ability to not shake, get shaken is really when she took to her brother and they become became much more closer and were able to bond because he built his whole career off of people telling him he couldn't do something. She had never experienced that until she went through some concussions and injuries and all of a sudden she was starting to doubt herself. People might have doubted her and she was able to turn around, obviously now having herself a terrific season. Well, you see what that doubt produced for Russell Wilson, a Super Bowl champion, and now his younger sister is hoping that she can become a national champion with the number one overall seed in the tournament, Stanford. Trying to advance to the Sweet 16. Working baseline, Hannah Jump kicks it back out as the shot clock expires. And oh yeah, right now Stanford is feeling it. Haley Jones knocking down the three. Asbury tried to answer on the other end, but right now it's been all Stanford. Well, they're just so unselfish and they read the defense and you know they make the appropriate passes and unselfish play. And Haley Jones, I mean, she is one of the most versatile players in the game. We talked a little bit about Cameron Brink at six foot four, but she can score anywhere. So can Haley Jones. Right now, Stanford three of four from beyond the arc before that shot. Believe he trying to wrestle around that rebound. Stanford will get the ball. And there's just so much to like about the Stanford team just because of the depth, right? And, and they have, you know, a mixture of great experience and these newcomers that have really contributed and made an impact. And then, of course, players like Anna Wilson, who have really earned a starting spot. They've got a really good blend of, of newcomers and experience, some interchangeable pieces offensively where they don't really miss a beat when she goes to her bench. And that's a luxury when you get to the NCAA tournament where, you know, you don't have players log in 38, 39 minutes. 
Haley Jones bringing it up the floor, stripped away by the Cowgirls. DeLap once more, right place, right time. Cassidy DeLap matching her point total from that first round game and win over Wake Forest. I think Oklahoma State is at its best in transition. About a quarter of their offense is scored in the fast break, so they need to push the tempo a little bit so that Stanford cannot set up their defense, which is hard to score against. They keep you in front of them. No team is shot better than 42% against the Cardinal. They keep teams at bay offensively. Natasha Mack, the turnaround, no good. Mack so far has yet to score in this game. After coming off that impressive 27 point performance. Yeah, just how good was she, Tiff, in that mm -hmm. first round game? I mean, th those shots we're seeing her shoot tonight, I mean, she was making. Mm -hmm. And so the, clearly the strategy for Stanford is to push Natasha Mack further out, further out, outside of the paint where she can be less effective, force her into being a jump shooter as opposed to being able to post up on the block. Ashton Prechtel checking in, gets it to roll around, good size off the bench, and the sophomore out of Colorado, Colorado Springs adding to this Stanford lead, up by eight, under two minutes to go in the first quarter. On the drive, that's Natoa, Nefertali Natoa. True freshman, again, we mentioned four freshmen on this team for the Cowgirls, and certainly we've seen these first-year players play an integral role in the Cowgirls' success. Nice Woo. turnaround. Woo. Goodness. I mean, come on, Haley Jones. Good open look from Natoa, and right now you see Oklahoma State trying to close out this quarter, picking up in their shooting. That one poked away from behind, out on the break and running. It's good, and now the Cowgirls within three. Those easy points in transition, they've increased their intensity on the defensive side of the floor. It's a great way to get yourself out of a rut. Wilson with her first miss of this game. And Oklahoma State is at their last three shots. Taking her time going up against Wilson. Wilson stripped away and you see the great defense there, Wilson. Just keeping her feet moving. Yeah, it's just so tough, so quick, and she beats you to the spot without drawing a foul. It must run in the family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shot up before the buzzer. And the basket is good. Giftler for two in the Big 12. And they said, okay, yeah, no problem. We'll just yeah. go ahead and... <laughs> We'll bump that up a little bit. Finished third in the conference. And, and, and this is a group that is believed all year. You know, they came into this tournament on a 16-day layoff from their last game after finishing off their semifinal loss in the Big 12. And, and, and they looked sharp in that opening round game, and now they're starting to take form here. You know, they're really led by Natasha Mack, who is a, is a humble player, but so hardworking. She's tough. She's physical. And when this team really defends and gets out and runs in transition, I mean, they're tough because they share the basketball, too. I mean, they're right there with Stanford in terms of assists. They've got to do a much better. they got to close out quicker on the Stanford three. We talked about how Stanford hit 15 how many in their two? opening round. Fifteen. How many? Fifteen. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. 
And already Who's here tonight, four of seven from beyond the arc. Make that. Letting it fly back the other way and answering is Lexi Keys. You can see with Oklahoma State, the adjustment that they've tweaked with their offense is they're just pushing the pace, so they're not letting Stanford really get set up in their defense, so they're finding open shots in transition. And one thing that was really impressive in their first round game was their ability to find the open player and share the basketball, and Lexi Keys hit three threes in that first round game, picking up right where she left off. As Natasha Mack checks back in, Steffi, you talked about how much she means to this team. I mean, they're only trailing by one, and Mack hasn't even scored a single point in this game. It, that's, that's the most impressive thing to me, Tiffany, in this game, because of Oklahoma State's eight losses, it's when Natasha Mack and Jamie Asbury, they're the only two scorers. So when it's just them two, and if they have an off game, Oklahoma State is lost. So the fact that other players are, are active, aggressive, and looking for their shot is a great sign for the Cowgirls. Shot too strong there. Natoa going for the rebound. Wilson wraps it up. Jump ball, possession arrow goes to Stanford. Well, Mac is one of those players projected go, to go the top five pick in the WNBA draft and you know some question marks throughout the season were about could she produce offense and, and could she knock down the jumper from outside well there's no question that she is an imposing force defensively six foot eleven wingspan despite the fact that she's only six four but her offense has has come along she's got tremendous upside and we saw that in the first round her offense has been slow here, but her team picking up for her. On the steal and converting tie ball game, Taylor Collins with the easy lay-in. First tie of this one. They're trying to tie up Lexi Hall, jump ball, and you see Jim Littell and that bench for the Cowgirls pumped up about it. Well, they've done a much better job of, and you see the the blood on Hull's nose. I mean, Oklahoma State certainly is up their defensive pressure, especially guarding the ball. Jamie Asbury doing a terrific job, just not making not making it easy for Stanford. You saw them cutting and moving to start their first quarter. Everything was groovy, and now it's they're making it more choppy. See the nosebleed for Lexi Hall. Fun. No, not fun at all. The junior out of Spokane, Washington, sees her twin sister, Lacey, check in for her. And, and, and what's so special about these twins for the Cardinal is the fact that, you know, you talk to the coaches, they are absolute competitors, ready for the challenge. They are going to step into it. So, you know, not fun but maybe something they might be proud of after the game because they're going to do whatever <laughs> <Yeah>. it takes <laughs> to help their team win. Some battle scars. Mm -hmm. Look at Natasha Mack. She is working to try and get some position against Cameron Brink. And good defense as several white jerseys surrounding Mack poked away. And last touch by the Cowgirls, so Max still held scoreless here. Tie ball game, opportunity to go to the Sweet 16 and wonderful pass there from Kiana Williams to Haley Jones. I have a feeling Kiana Williams, just before that possession, she looked at her coach and, and made a, a hand gesture. It might've been a, a, a signal for a back cut to offset some of the pressure by Oklahoma State. Good read by the senior. Well, she just is a nice coach on the floor as Natoa okay, with the strip and the bucket. Natoa now with seven points. Back to a tie ball game. The eight seed Oklahoma State bringing the defensive pressure and intensity, stepping things up 
Asbury guarding Lacey Hull. Williams in the brink. Brink trying to work on Mack. Turns around. Coming in for that rebound. That was Hull. Ooh. But Brink stepping out. The versatility of the freshman Cameron Brink. Yeah, you're looking at the future of women's basketball right there. A six foot four post player who on one possession posts up and then she hits a three with ease. Six to go on the shot clock. Lat passes it up over to Natoa. Natoa has to put it up and it's blocked stuff there from Brink. You saw her knock down the three. Now look at the versatility, bringing it up the court, and she's called for the charge. Brink with the block. Remember, she leads the Pac-12 in blocks, but without hesitation, takes the ball up the court, a little bit out of control, and you have to credit Cassidy DeLapp for getting back to take the charge. This game has so much in it. This game has got a lot of juice, Tiff. Oh, These, this yeah. is what it's all about. <laughs> a ton of fun as this is a nightcap for basketball fans who have watched some second round action earlier today and teams moving on, advancing. Iowa, Michigan, North Carolina State, the number one overall, uh, number one seed in the Mercado region. And the three-pointer from Kiana Williams. And finally, she gets a three. You know, she's the career leader at Stanford for three-pointers made. And there, it's number 301 as Russell Wilson is loving it right here. Okay, folks, just in case you were wondering, now it's time for a major key alert. Kiana Williams, she's a baller. Take in. <laughs> Just, if UConn wins today, mm -hmm. Paige Beckers versus Caitlin Clark. Yeah, buddy. Okay, that's a must. You, yeah, buddy. You, that's a must watch. Uh, you know, South Carolina and Maryland, the speed and offense that you'd see in that game, uh, you got Aaliyah Boston, and then Maryland's got six players averaging double figures. They're tough. I, I mean, we're going to see some – now we're going to see some really entertaining games. We, we saw that today with some upsets yesterday. We've got the nightcap here. This one's close. Got ourselves a good game. Indeed, indeed. You talked about some of those upsets. How about White State? Doing their thing. They're taking on Missouri State. The winner of this one will face either of those two teams as Mack really losing the handle. Got to put something up quickly. And the Cowgirls turn it over. Well, just a tough quarter and a half for Natasha Mack thus far as Stanford has made it incredibly difficult for her but the active hands and the defense for the Cowgirls really helped them get back in this ball game they trailed 8 nothing to start Williams making it rain. You knew she was ready to unload and unleash in front of her family. And you see him excited, dancing in the stands. Yeah, buddy. That was a contested shot from Asbury. Williams moving up left side of the court. Well, tomorrow the NCAA Women's Championship second round continues over on ESPNU with Belmont, Indiana, then BYU, Arizona. And on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern, it's Iowa State and the Aggies of Texas A&M, followed by Texas and UCLA. You can always watch every game on the ESPN app. Looking forward to that BYU-Arizona matchup. Cougars. Pulling off an upset. How about Paisley Harding? I can't wait to watch Paisley Harding play. 
It's like no one even heard that name, and then all day, all day <laughs> in studio and games, everyone's like, Paisley Harding. That's going to be a fun one. 11 seed Cougars took down the higher seeded Rutgers to advance. Here, Kiana Williams and company trying to make it to the Sweet 16. It's winner go home at this point, folks. Collins with the rebound. Working her way through the lane. Got it. And one. Keys with the aggressive take to the rim. Little hesitation goes by two Stanford defenders. Great bounce from the freshman. She's going to be good, Tiffany. I mean, six foot one. Her dad, Terry, played for four years for the men's program under Eddie Sutton. Went to a Final Four, so he was a scrappy defensive player. So, Taylor Collins probably knew more about help side defense before knocking down threes, but her <laughs> offense is coming along for Jim Littell. When you think about just the freshman class going into Stillwater, is Keys, Collins, and Natoa doing their thing for Jim Littell about Kate Cunningham and company on the other side for the men and for Oklahoma State. These cowgirls trying to get back to the Sweet 16 for the first time in seven years. Jones hands it off. <laughs> Belibi got it. What an amazing talent Fran Belibi is. We came on the air showing her dunking the basketball. She already did it a couple of times during the regular season. And, and she got off to a great start and then kind of fizzled out a little way, part of the way through. But that was okay because we mentioned the depth of Stanford. Cameron Brink kind of helped out, but there she is on the defensive end. You see the fire and intensity <laughs> yeah. she brings. You can hear her too. I mean, she's she is a physical specimen. It, she's got over 32 inch vert. We saw her dunk with ease, but Look, she only started playing basketball in 2015. I mean, she's literally just getting to know the game. I mean, that athleticism takes you so far. Now she's really starting to understand the Stanford system, the offense. Keys Speaking of someone who knows. So dangerous. Yes, ma'am. Kiana Williams. Nine points. We mentioned most career threes. In a Stanford uniform, passing Candace Wiggins in that first round game. Up ahead and easy. Seemingly too easy for the Stanford Cardinal. They stretch the lead out to 14 with a minute to go in the first half. Mack. Still scoreless, working on Brink, and those are the first two points of the ball game. Coming up on the AT&T 5G halftime report, Michigan making some history. Meanwhile, you talked about Caitlin Clark, a special freshman out of Iowa. Big day for her, but how about Anna Wilson? She started this game three for three from the floor. Hello. Huh. It's contagious, the three ball. And this was a tie ball game in this second quarter and then it seemed like Stanford just flipped a switch. Natoa, deep three. The number one overall seed. Stanford Cardinal with a 42-27 lead at the half. Anna Wilson came to play, folks. 11 points for the senior brother, Wilson Russell. He's loving it. Batches. Yeah, Tiffany, I think she's got to be a little bit more aggressive, too, and, and really trying to push Cameron, Cameron Brink back. 
and establish some position on the post. Usually she, she's getting the ball around half half the time of her offensive sets where she scores, it's on the low block. And they forced her off that low block. So she's got to be much more physical here in the second half. She's whistled for the foul. And, and I'm curious to know, Steffi, are the bodies being thrown at her having to guard Brink and, and Prechtel? Is, is that going to wear her down as, you know, a great defender? I, I think that she's probably used to seeing a lot of different looks throughout the year. I mean, you think about a team like Baylor. I mean, they, they, they're going to going up against them in uh, the Big 12 in West Virginia. So I, I don't think it's anything out of the ordinary, but I think Natasha Mack, there's several plays where she, she got the ball, Tiffany, on offense, and she passed out of it, and it created an opportunity. Or she kind of sealed, sealed off her defender, and Natoa could get in for an easy bucket. So there's ways to still get involved offensively, but you got to credit Stanford's defense. I mean, Natasha Mack scored 27 points in the first round. She's got two. Kiana Williams keeping up where Stanford left off. Double digits threes here tonight for the Cardinal. Stretching out to their largest lead of the ball game. Mack getting it deep in the post, but again, a couple of white jerseys around. Williams over to Jones. Jones going right at Collins. And Haley Jones, who we have seen just her versatility, a, a player who is filled in nicely. All Pac-12 performer out of Santa Cruz, California. Natoa back the other way, who had herself a solid first half. She's got nine. We talk about Jones being from Santa Cruz, and she and her teammates spent a lot of time there throughout this regular season. Stanford rolling offensively. Why? Because they have so many options. Also, Kiana Williams feeling it from the three. Haley Jones, some versatility, get to the rim. And of course, Lexi Hull, she's aggressive. She can get to the rim. She can do it all for Stanford. But when you've got one through five, that can score anywhere on the floor tip. You, you got to think about defensively. Well, where do I gamble? Where, Who do I help off of? That's what makes defenses, you know, so dangerous when you can help off or you can really play the passing. You can't do that against her. They'll, they'll read it and they'll make you pay. Hull in on that steal. Pushing it up ahead, Brink running the floor. And they hand it right back over. Fields, deep three, off the mark. Wilson, who was a perfect three for three from beyond the arc in that first half. Natoa coming down with the rebound. Oklahoma State Cowgirls trying to make it to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2014, and they will need more buckets like that from Natasha Mack. Jones, good defense. They had coverage there from the Cowgirls. You can see Mack trying to clear some space. See how far away from the block she is. Cameron Brink just trying to push her away. That opens up space along the perimeter, though. Around. Yeah. Taking it, but the offensive foul called against Lexi Hull. Lexi Hull loves to take it right off the bounce. Does the Toa beat her to the spot? 
and square up. Look, I I'm deferring to you now at this point since I was 0 for 3 the other day. <laughs> but kind of a tough call. Four minutes gone by, and Oklahoma State trying to claw their way back in there, getting in the lane, and the bucket is Lauren Fields. Jones taking her time, sizing up, letting it fly from three. My goodness, they seemingly can't miss from three-point range here tonight. 11 of 15 from deep for Stanford. Fields couldn't answer, back the other way. Wilson and the Cardinal getting out running. Jones, contact. And one on the way. Well, Stanford's triangle offense really utilizes one-on-one -on -one mismatches. And Haley Jones, you can put a post flare on you, a guard. She finds ways to get it done. And then in transition, I'm telling you, she's one of the most versatile players in the country. Number one recruit by ESPN coming out of high school, a McDonald's All-American. And Haley Jones... has learned a lot just by way of her journey throughout her career at Stanford in her second season. Sorry, you're cut short because of injury and said she learned a lot just by watching players and just putting herself in her teammates' shoes. Jones pacing the way tonight with 15 points for Stanford. Cutting. Ever so strong, and now the Stanford senior is back to the place where her father helped to groom her become one of the best in a Cardinal uniform. So I started playing basketball when I was like four or five. My dad put me in a, a San Antonio Spurs Youth League basketball, um, and he was the coach for that team. And really, my dad introducing us to sports was a way for you know us to you know stay out of trouble and and you know find stuff to do. And he he's done a really good job of uh, coaching us and, and molding us into the people that we are. Third team AP All American and Kiana Williams has just been radiating joy since returning to her hometown of San Antonio. Went on to set a new record in Stanford history, most career three point makes, and and she gets to do it in front of a yeah. whole lot of family. Stephanie, yeah. really awesome story. First of all, you see her dad; he was jacked. I mean, he was a linebacker, so. <laughs> That's a, a special bond between the two of them. I know that he uh, is her biggest fan, biggest critic, but they have a, a really unique, special bond. And Keanu Williams, I mean, when she reflected on how far she's come and, and the way that she's playing now, she was like, when I came in as a freshman, I was skinny, kind of shy, didn't really know what I wanted out of life. Now as a senior, I'm still skinny but I'm confident and I'm playing some of my best basketball and, and, and has a bright future ahead of her. And the type of player too that just brings sunshine into the room whenever she walks in, big smile, everyone loves her, just as kind as she can be, but what a great competitor she is as well. And it's also been so much fun for her. She talked about after that first game, she was like, "I this day, this tournament couldn't come soon enough i was <laughs> ready i had like my whole family there several yeah. friends in the stands as well and she showed up and showed out in that ball game she knocked down six threes and the family is repping kiana hard okay well you think about the journey that has been for stanford this season where they spend over 60 60 days on the road when they had to leave campus due to their county and their COVID protocols. 
So the fact that she can have family here cheering her on, I mean, it's extra special because of the difficulties and all the adversity that this team has had to go through this season. When you think about the adversity, Steffi, they spent nine weeks Oof. on the road, okay? Yeah. So when you when you talk to coach and, and, and players, you know, Tara Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt says, look, we're prepared for this like we're we're ready for this given the fact of what we we've, we've been through we, we're used to being in hotels and ordering in and traveling on buses i mean just thinking about what they had to overcome but in the process they won a whole lot of basketball games 19 of their 21 away from maples pavilion yeah, i mean anytime there's considerable considerable amount of adversity there, there's going to be a considerable considerable amount of growth and I think that that's what Tara Vanderveer has seen from her team where they feel good coming into the term they, they've been on the road they're used to this situation other teams and, and every team is has been different has had their own battles this year but the fact that you know they come into San Antonio well they're used to life on the road this this isn't nothing anything new to them six different states for this group and 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 it was all because of the santa cloud uh santa clara county uh really enhanced their COVID 19 guidelines prohibiting contact sports that was late in november and so then stanford temporarily had to relocate their practices and their games away from maples and it has just been one of the most interesting stories this season. And yet, Tara Vanderveer has them in this tournament as the number one overall seed coming off a Pac-12 championship. They've won it three of the last six years, but this is a coach who has amassed so much success. We mentioned the winning us all time. And Women's basketball history. Leads all coaches yeah. in NCAA tournament appearances. 35. And probably, sorry Tiff, you keep yeah. going. I mean, it, we would be here all day if, if we're gonna go <laughs> down True. all True. of the things that Tara Vanderveer has done in her career. I mean, it has been historic this season. I think this has been one of, arguably one of her best coaching jobs mm -hmm. with the ability to adapt and evolve and keep your players locked in, especially being on the road, not in these players' own gyms. And I think you have to give a lot of credit to, to, to the student athletes for the sacrifices and also the ability to adapt and make it work. And these, these are young kids, these are young people. But they wanted to get out here, they wanted to get to the NCAA tournament and hats off to them. I know it's been a difficult ride. But this is the stage that they set in their minds after last season, not even being able to play in the NCAA tournament because it was canceled last year due to the pandemic. So all these teams that have made it to the San Antonio area, they're beyond thankful for that chance, but Stanford Trying to do something special here, win 13, or make their 13th consecutive trip to the Sweet 16. That one short. Final minute of the third period. And did Williams get a piece of that one? I think she also got a piece of the Cowgirls' Lexi Keys as well, and Williams a little slow to get up. Let's see if she lands awkwardly. I think that uh, that was all ball, but we hope she's okay. I mean, the way that she's been playing too. Just a glue player for this team and, and a model of consistency really throughout her, her career at Stanford. And one of three seniors on the team as she's still limping over to the bench. You know, Tara Vanderveer has three seniors. She's like, all of you are welcome back. 
Okay. <laughs> you could take advantage of that COVID year as Williams will go over to the trainer's table and get some attention. OSU now on a 10 nothing run. So they're closing the gap. Again, you just look up and down this roster and everyone seemingly has knocked down the three in this game all but two have hit the floor for Stanford. And it's also been the timeliness of the three ball where it's like Oklahoma State starts to push forward, starts to chip away at the lead and it's just a big three from Stanford who's shooting 68% from behind the arc. Natasha Max sees that one rim around eight points now for the senior. Final seconds. And Stanford with 13 threes in this ball game. Seemingly can't miss from deep. Quarter away from the sweet six by 11, but a good sign for Kiana Williams and the Cardinal as their four-year starter trying to shake off that lower leg injury. Final 10 minutes in regulation. It's winner go home time. Anna Wilson, hesitation. Jones puts it up just before. And how about Woo! Cameron Breek coming in off glass, one hand put back. That was a nice flash right there, Steffi, that true freshman who yeah. had a great Pac-12 tournament. Showed a little bit of her volleyball background too. Yeah. All-state volleyball player where she just comes up grabs it with that one hand. And see, Natasha Mack is guarding Brink, but she doesn't really turn and fight. It's too late. She goes right up. Terrific athleticism from the freshman. The soft hands from Cameron Brink, who's just a great talent. Well, tomorrow afternoon, the NCAA Women's Championship second round continues with these matchups at 1 Eastern on ESPN, Alabama, Maryland, then Oregon and Georgia on ESPNU, followed by Wright State and Missouri State. And Louisville taking on Northwestern. You can catch all those games also available on the ESPN app. Haley Jones working her way around the rim. 17 points, a team high for Stanford. Natoa has had herself a nice ball game, trying to push the issue. Mack on the offensive rebound. Couple more opportunities. And OSU cannot convert. There's a couple missed opportunities for Oklahoma State. Close. You can see see that length and the wingspan of Natasha Mack. Accidentally uh, swats a Stanford defender there. But she's such a terrific story. I really enjoyed getting to know Natasha Mack. Tiffany, I know you did too. Just her, her journey where you know, she graduates high school, takes a year off. She's working in a chicken processing plant. No, no plans, not necessarily sure what she's going to do. Ends up at a junior college and is a junior college All-American. And now, you know, obviously playing in the NCAA tournament and potentially a top five WNBA draft pick. Humble beginnings for Mack but big things ahead for her. 
The finalists for the Naismith National Defensive Player of the Year Monday, and Coach Littell talked about her humble beginnings, but also her leadership and how she's really grown in that position, mentoring players, and and they feed off of her work ethic. They they see her in practice, in games. Really laying it all out there. And right now, her team has some work to do. Trailing by 15. Keys bet inside. Tune in to ESPN and the ESPN app Thursday at 7 when NC State takes on Colorado State in the first game of an NIT quarterfinals doubleheader. Make sure you visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. 16th appearance in the tournament for the Cowgirls. First in three years. Jim Littell, who helped to lead this program to Sweet 16 back in 2014. He'll get a chance to talk it over with his ladies. Trey Alamo Dome, looking at the Alamo region, the winner of this one will face off against either Missouri State or Wright State. All eight teams you see here. Lots of good games. Get a chance, yeah. Lots of good games. That Georgia-Oregon game is going to be really fun. I mean, you think about mm -hmm. the finesse that Oregon plays with and the grit and, like, the defensive-minded attitude that Georgia plays with, two very different styles. But I I'm curious how Wright State plays. I mean, they took it to Arkansas. Right. And Angel Baker had herself a game. She had 24 or 26 points. Be curious if she can do it again. Coming out of the timeout. Oklahoma State still hanging around in this one, Steffi. This is a, a team that is just kind of trying to keep pace, getting in. But every time seemingly Oklahoma State maybe can get something going, you said it, Stanford comes up with these timely buckets just to, yeah. just to <laughs> and they've really negate negated some of that the, hope. Yep. They've, they've done such a good job of pulling Natasha Mack out of the paint where she is so effective at blocking shots. The best shot blocker in the country. She only has one block today. And it's like anybody who's Natasha Mack is guarding just slips out to the three-point line or just tries to see where Cameron Brink is. She, she will move around. She'll either post or pull Mack out of the paint. See how that frees up Haley Jones? Mm -hmm. And Steffi, you think about, you know, being able to have, you know, 6'4", 6'5", in the post thrown at, you know, Natasha Mack from Stanford and Brink and Prechtel. Katie Stedding, first year assistant on this staff, has done a really nice job working with the post players. And <laughs> boy, does she ever have some weapons to work with in that front court. He had a pretty good career, right? With Stanford? <laughs> I, I, I'd say so. Maybe, perhaps, uh, Tara's first recruit led the squad to their first ever title in 1990. Went on to win an Olympic gold medal in Atlanta. Summer this Games of 96. This, it, it seems like Oklahoma State just continues to kind of slowly, methodically chip away at the lead, Tara Vanderveer doesn't want to let her team get complacent. Here's a good look at the Stanford staff, that championship game on the fourth. The Stanford Cardinal, two-time national champion coming back in the 90s under Tara Vanderveer and program who is the number one overall seed in this tournament for the first time since 1996. 
Some little things that Anna Wilson does. Beat Lauren Fields to the spot, taking the charge. Remember, she was she really got the offensive party going in the first quarter, and mm -hmm. but she's really known for her defense. Just just has a knack for for shutting people down. Good find, good ball movement. That ends a scoring drought for Stanford as Oklahoma State has just kind of been lurking in the distance. But great ball movement, as you mentioned, Steffi, from Stanford. And the awareness from Fran Belibi to dumping down over to Cameron Brink. Look, the drive. Oklahoma State to just down by 13 points, four, uh, four minutes to go in this game, and they're shooting 45% from the floor. No one has shot over 41% all season long for if, what am I trying to say here, Tiff? Help yeah, me out. they have no <laughs> opponent against Stanford Correct. has shot yes. <laughs> better than 41%. All season long, they've held opponents to 77 or less throughout their 28 games. A team defensively can clamp it down, but they can also block shots just like that from Cameron Brink. When you get defensive efforts like that, coupled with the Pac-12 Co-Defensive Player of the Year and Anna Wilson, you see why they have been so tough to stop all season long. And it was Cameron Brink, really, who in, was inserted into that starting lineup after those back-to-back -back losses against Colorado and UCLA. But she's been brought along slowly, but you see she is getting up to speed with the collegiate game, the physicality right there, going in for that old board, and she's fouled. There's some players that let the rebound comes come to them to and there's players that hunt them and, and Cameron Brink does a really nice job of reading the ball off of the rim and she's so tall that she's just one hop away from getting it and you know what she's been around the game of basketball guess where her grandparents are yep Steph Curry's parents god sister to the baller Steph Curry himself so she has been privy to some inside information. <laughs> to say the, the least. Court. Yeah. <laughs> Her mom was roommates with Steph Curry's mom over at Virginia Tech. And I think that's a big reason why, too, why she has guard-like skills. I mean, think of the, the resources that she has access to, and she just kept growing and growing. Jamie Asbury's three, pulling the Cowgirls within 11. Just over three minutes to go in regulation. The second round game between the eight seed Oklahoma State Cowgirls and the number one overall seed Stanford Cardinal. Single digits on the shot clock. Williams, deep three. Mack with the rebound. And this is a chance to trim this lead even more, but Brink altering that shot there. Good defense. Williams thought about it. Dribble over. Belibi. Good thought, just too tough of a pass. <laughs> Tasha Mack getting a little bit frustrated. And it's it's been a tough day for her. And Stanford's just thrown a multitude of bodies and different players at her. I like to see her catch be strong, show some of those moves we saw in the first first round game. See how she's kind of shied away a little bit today? Mm -hmm. 
not the same assertiveness that we saw in that first round game against Wake Forest. One second to go on the shot clock. Oklahoma State. Jim Littell not ready for the season to end for his ladies, but they've got some work to do in the final two minutes. Matt closing in on a double-double with her ninth rebound. And they look to go to number four in orange. The turnaround and Brink is whistle for the foul. Well, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 begins Saturday on CBS and TBS or stream games on the March Madness Live app from anywhere. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA. Dot com. Well, if Oklahoma State can stop the clock, draw fouls, get to the free throw line, we can come back in this one. They slice the lead now to single digits on those two Mac makes. Hezzy by Williams, left short. Got to go, got to go for Oklahoma State. No time to really play with the ball. Looking for your first good shot. Asbury, an excellent three-point shooter on the season. And Jim Littell spends a timeout, wants to talk it over with his team. They have one timeout remaining. Down by nine. Trying to get to the Sweet 16 for the first time in seven years. So Steffi, Coach Littell spends that time out. What does he need to draw up to try to go up against this defense of Stanford who's been tough all night long? Yeah, I, I think it's gotta be some sort of um, on ball with, with Mac, with one of, your, one of your penetrators. That way you can get either to the rim, you can set up Mac for a pick and roll, or you can kick it out to a shooter. I think Lexi Keys is a great option. She's two of two from the three point line. So anytime you, you, you have three of those kind of options, you got a pick and roll and a shooter. You wanna put those all on the same side of the floor. But the interesting thing is if this thing, if they can chip away, neither team's fouled. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me, they had no fouls to give. No. I knew exactly where you were going with yeah, that. Yeah, you so know what I just, mean. And the audience at home do the same thing, so. <laughs> All gravy, baby. Oh, 51.9 seconds. <laughs> Aren't they lovely? No, no, we, hey. Our crew has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Step it up. For the big time, the big dance. On the inbound, the toes hit a couple of threes to go into Matt Kiana Williams coming in with some help defense, jump ball. And Stanford gets the ball on the possession arrow. And terrific help side by Williams. She limps onto the floor, but yet gets the tie up. That's the type of player that she is, creating opportunities to try to close this thing out. So cool. So they foul Williams, she'll go to the line. Both teams will shoot free throws the rest of the way, but quickly stopping the clock and Williams family right there, mom Lachelle and father Michael. First free throw attempts on the way for Williams, leaving it short on the first. And the lead pulled back out 
to 10. Got to see a sense of urgency from Oklahoma State. Again, Williams on the help defense. Left open was Keys that popped in and out. And wrestling that, that rebound to, away was Brink. Yep. That, that was the play. You go inside to Mac and you find your shooter to Keys. She had a great look. I, I, I've loved the fight that we've seen from Oklahoma State. I mean, Stanford kind of comes at you in waves, right? They'll substitute. And then some players will hit threes or they'll just go on a little bit of a run. But Oklahoma State just continues to hang tough. They'd fight back. They'd get some turnovers. Just felt like every time they'd start to turn the corner, Stanford would turn it on again. And I mean, that's why they are the number one overall seed. Yeah. We talked about how they caught fire from three tonight. 13 threes for Stanford at 15 in that first round game and that one well off the mark from Ohio State, excuse me, Oklahoma State. The three seniors for Oklahoma State will see their season come to a close. Natasha Mack, likely her final game, possibly her final game in a Oklahoma State uniform. And it's the number one overall seed, Stanford Cardinal advancing to the sweet.